3.5 transformations of exponential functions. So let's recall that y equals b to the x, okay? This is going to map onto y equals a, which is gonna be our vertical stretch or vertical compression. Um, we've been calling this, we've actually been calling this k, so we'll change that, k, which is gonna be our horizontal stretch or uh, compression. H is gonna be our movement left, right, and then this we've been calling C has been um, is going to be our movement up down. Okay, and just to recall, this is going to create the mapping one over kx plus h, and then ay plus c. So we're going to just change those so they're all consistent. Okay, so first we're going to take a look at horizontal and vertical translations. Okay, so all together we're going to go left right, and we're going to do the up downs. Okay, so um, we know from mapping notation, we're going to add or subtract the H from the X, and then we're gonna add or subtract the C from the Y. So example one, first state the equation of the base graph, then describe in words how the graph of each of the following functions can be obtained from the base graph, and, and we're gonna state the mapping notation. So, our base graph for the first one is y equals two to the x, okay? So we have a base of two to the x, okay? Now this plus two is actually gonna go left two, okay? And this minus three at the end is gonna go down three. So our mapping notation Every single x value is going to subtract 2 because we're going left 2. And then every single y value, we're going to go down 3, so y minus 3. Okay, for the second question, y equals 3 to the x minus 1 minus 4. So with this, the base graph is actually different. It's 3 to the exponent x. So with exponential functions, there's not just one base graph like there is for a line or a quadratic. There are in infinitely many base graphs. We just change the number, like the B value, okay? This one says that we go right one, and this four says we go down four. So since we're going right one, we're going to add a one to all the X's. And since we're gonna go down four, we're gonna subtract four from every single y value. So example two, for each of the following functions, we're gonna state the mapping notation, we're gonna sketch the function, and then state the domain and range. Okay, so the mapping notation, um, our base graph is two to the x, and every x value we're gonna add three since this is right three. And every y value, we're gonna add two since this is up two. Okay, so with the base graph of two to the x, I actually only um, took into account the negative one, zero, and one, and that's enough uh, to, to realize like where the graph is going, right? The end, the end behaviors. And then the horizontal asymptote of the original is y equals zero. So let's add three to the x's. Negative one plus three, zero plus three, one plus three. Okay, this is a y value, so we're not touching that yet. And every y value, we're gonna add two. So one half plus two. Okay, so we get 2.5. Okay, one plus two, we get three. Two plus two, we get four. Okay, this is a y value here. So our new horizontal asymptote, we're gonna take that zero and we're gonna add two, right? Y plus two, it's gonna be the same format. So y equals two. So if we were to graph this, we can graph the y equals two. Okay, and now let's graph a couple points. Two comma 2.5, three comma three, four comma four. Okay, XER is still the domain. 
always, unless it's in a word problem. And the why, so again, we're going from left to right. So when we read this, we're going up. See how this is increasing, okay? And we're actually above. So we're above the asymptote. So what happens is y is going to be strictly greater than 2 because this is our horizontal asymptote. So reflections of exponential functions. So the mapping notation, okay, so when there is a reflection on the x, this is a reflection in the y-axis. And if it's on the y, this is a reflection in the x-axis. So for this chart, what we're going to do is we're going to state the equation of the base graph again. We're going to describe in words what transformations are being applied. And then we're going to uh, state the mapping notation. So this first base function is y equals 2 to the x. This is being reflected, since so it affects the x because it's like attached to the x. So it's reflected in the y-axis. So every x value is going to be reflected and the y values are going to stay the same. Okay, so the second base graph is actually y equals one-half to the x. We have this double reflection. So this is going to be reflected in the x-axis and it's going to be reflected in the y-axis. Our mapping notation, we're going to reflect all of the x's and we're going to reflect all of the y's. So negative x comma negative y. So example four, for each of the following functions, again we're going to see the mapping notation. We're going to sketch the function and then we're going to state the domain and range. So this is that double reflection. So we're going to reflect the x's and then we're going to reflect the y's. So our original base function here was one half to the exponent x. Okay, so we used this table's uh, drawn in for us. If not, then we would just use the numbers uh, negative one, zero, and one for this x column and the original horizontal asymptote, which is y equals zero. Okay, every x is going to be reflected. So let's take all the x's. Negative one changes to one. Zero doesn't have a sign on it. One changes to negative one. The horizontal asymptote doesn't have an x in it, so it's not touched yet. And the y's we're going to reflect as well. Two reflects to negative two. 1 reflects to negative 1, 1 half becomes negative 1 half, okay? y equals 0 as the horizontal asymptote. The thing is, if we multiplied 0 by 1, uh, negative 1, we're still going to get 0. 0 doesn't have a sign on it. So I start every sketch by drawing and labeling the horizontal asymptote, and then let's Let's sketch 1 comma negative 2, 0 comma negative 1, and negative 1 comma negative a half. So I get a graph looking like this. Oh, and I should have labeled that last one. Okay, our domain always, unless it's in a word problem, is XER. Okay, and our range. We have to think, are we above the asymptote or are we below? Well, this time we're below the horizontal asymptote. So y is less than 0, 0 being our horizontal asymptote. So horizontal and vertical stretches and compressions. Okay, so we're going to change this one to a k and uh, that one's still a, so that one's good. Okay, so again, we're going to first state the equation of the base graph. Then we're going to describe in words the transformations applied. Then we're going to do mapping notation. So 
for this first function here, our base graph is 1 over 3 to the exponent x. And the, the exponent here is like, oh no, I'm lying to you. This base graph is 2, sorry, to the exponent x. 1 over 3 is going to be our a value. That's going to be a vertical compression by a factor of one third. And this four is gonna be our K value. So that's gonna be a horizontal compression by a factor of one over four. Our mapping notation for that, so our k value affects our x. So we're going to go 1 over 4x. So we're going to take a quarter because it's a compression. So we're going to take a quarter of the x's, and vertically we're compressing it by a third as well, so a third of the y's. Okay, for the second one, our base graph is 1 half to the exponent x. This 3 means there's a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. And this 1 half attached to the x means that there's a horizontal stretch by a factor of two. Remember, it's the reciprocal. So every single x term is going to be stretched by three, by two, and every single y value is going to be stretched by three. So two x comma three y. Example six, for each of the following functions, we're gonna state the mapping notation, sketch the function, and then state the domain and range. So, this two means we have a vertical stretch by a factor of two. So, we're going to go two x. No, that's two y. Okay, this one quarter means we have a horizontal stretch by four. Remember, however we read this, so it looks like a one over four, we actually say that it's a stretch, and obviously a stretch is gonna be a whole number or a number greater than one, so it's a reciprocal. So we're gonna multiply every x value by four. Okay, I wanna highlight this. This three is not a transformation. This is one of the most confusing parts about exponential functions because it has this extra number in it, but it's not a transformation. What this is, is it's just the base graph. So our base graph this time is 3 to the x, which gives us these values here. Okay, same horizontal asymptote. So let's multiply each x by 4. So we get negative 4, 0, and 4. Horizontal asymptote is not affected. And let's multiply each y term by 2. So this is 2 over 3, this is 2, and this is 6. Again, 0 times 2, not affected. So I start with drawing our horizontal asymptote, y equals 0. And let's plot some points. Negative 4 and 2 thirds, 0 and 2, 4 and 6. Okay, so this is y equals 2, 3 to the 1 quarter x. Domain's going to be the same, x, e, r. Okay, and range, what we're going to take a look at is are we above the horizontal asymptote or are we below? Well, we're definitely above. 
So y is greater than, strictly greater than, our horizontal asymptote, which is zero. Okay, write the equation for the function that results from the transformations applied to five to the x. So now our base graph is five to the x, and then we're gonna write mapping coordinates. So what happens, what does it look like when it moves three units down? Well, this is y to the, y equals five to the x minus three. And this three only affects the y, and it's moving down three. Okay, what about six to the left? Well, we know right and left are gonna be right beside that x. Well, the x is in the exponent, so x plus six, which is actually to the left. Remember, this is again backwards x minus 6 will bring it to the left, y's don't change. Two up, eight to the right. So, eight to the right is gonna be x minus eight, and two up is gonna go plus two at the end of the equation. So, 8 to the right is x plus 8, and then we have y plus 2, which is 2 up. Okay, now we have vertical stretch by factor of 3 and reflection in the x-axis. So this creates together negative 3 as our a value. So y equals, I don't like that y, I'll do consistent, negative 3 and then our equation is 5 to the x. So every single y value is going to be multiplied by negative 3. Okay, uh, vertical compression by a factor of a quarter. So it's a compression by a quarter, so it's going to look like a 4. Reflection in the y axis. So those two actually go together, so it'll be a negative four. And three units left, so it's gonna look like a plus three. So I'm gonna actually do that one first because these all affect the x. So I'm gonna leave a space in case we have an a value. Okay, so this is five to the, so negative four has to be outside of the bracket, okay? Reflection in the y-axis, Compressed by a factor four horizontally. Oh, that's a vertical. This is a vertical compression. That affects the y. Horizontal compression. This two affects the x. So let's change that to a two. Okay, so negative two. And it's still going left three units. So x plus three. I'm gonna change my color for the, the y's. So vertical compression by a factor of a quarter, this affects the y. Up seven affects the y, and then that's it. So we have a one quarter and then an up seven. Now our mapping. I always do the y first, it's so easy because it's just a quarter and then seven. So one quarter x plus seven, it's just straightforward. Now the x is, this is gonna be negative a half, since it's a compression by a half, x minus three, minus three because it's left three. So exa exactly how we would say it is the way our mapping is. Okay, now vertical stretch by factor five, that's going to be in the front. Then we have 5 to the exponent x. Reflection on the x-axis is going to be with that. So both of these affect the a value. So they're going to affect the y. Um, up to is a normal, like, full number. 
and then horizontal stretch by a factor of three. Since it's stretching by three, we write a third. So in the exponent, one third x. So it's a stretch by three, which is three x, and then negative five y plus two, because the front and the back both apply to the y. Okay, example eight, describe in words the transformation that maps the function, maps the function, y equals nine to the x onto each equation, then write the mapping coordinates. Okay, so let's go in order. Four is a vertical stretch by a factor of, I'm gonna put by a factor of uh, four. Okay, we're gonna go left two down three. Okay, since it's a stretch by a factor of four, it's four y, and then down three, left two is gonna be x minus two. Okay, next one, reflection in the x-axis. Okay, and then we're gonna go left three. Okay, left three is gonna be um, x minus 3, and a reflection in the x-axis is going to be negative y. Okay, next one. The one-third is going to be a vertical compression. By a factor of one-third. And then we're going to go down one. Both of these affect the y, so the x is not affected. I'm going to go 1 third x minus 1. Okay, this 3 is a vertical stretch. Stretch. By a factor of uh, 3. This negative sign here is a reflection in the y-axis. I said y, I wrote x. y-axis, okay, because it affects the x. And then we're going to go to the right too. Okay, since it's a reflection in the y-axis, we get negative x. And we're going to the right too, so we get plus 2. And vertical stretch by a factor of three, we're going to multiply the, th the y's by three. Okay, so we have a uh, reflection in the x-axis. And this is a vertical stretch, the three. by a factor of, of three. I'm gonna move this last one down here. So this one, I'm gonna blend them. I'll move that one down. Okay, for the exponent here, we actually have to factor out the two. So it becomes 2 minus 1. So the 2 is a horizontal compression. By a factor of 1 over 2. And then it's actually going to the right 1. Not 2. And then we're going to go up 7. So reflection of the x-axis, we get negative 3y plus 7. Again, that's my easy one, okay? Anything at the beginning or the end is just straightforward. Negative 3y plus 7. Now for the x values, we're compressing it, so it's a half x, and then plus 2 since it's right. Oh, I should add 2 there. Okay, and then this is the last one. I added it back to the bottom. Okay, so this one half is a vertical compression. By a factor of one half. 
Okay, this negative sign is a reflection in the y-axis, which means it affects the x. Here's the thing, we have to factor that out. So it's going to look like this. We're going to factor out the negative and it becomes x minus 4. So now this is actually going to the right 4 and then down 20. So vertical compression by a half, I get 1 half y minus 20, right? Because that's the front and the back. So it's here and here. Now everything around the x is going to affect the x, negative x, and then it's going to the right 4, so I'm going to go plus 4.